Eyewitness News in high definition. Next on the Eyewitness News this morning, new details from that mass shooting down in Bakersfield and a possible motive. Hurricane Florence makes landfall. The Valley Red Cross now on the ground ready to help residents. This is CBS 47 Eyewitness News this morning in high definition. It is massive. It is covering literally two states. And it would be a huge mistake to underestimate the devastation and the power that this storm has. Right now, Hurricane Florence is swirling over the Carolinas as it pushes inland. This storm is now a Category 1 hurricane, but life-threatening storm surge has already started. Let's go to Mo Lange. He's live in Wilmington, North Carolina, with the very latest on this major storm system. Mola, good morning. Wind and rain coming on strong in the last few hours. Of course, the wind is not as strong and intense as initially predicted a few days ago, but still causing uh, some damage throughout the Carolinas in terms of power outages and knockdown structures. Uh, but it's the water, the potential for storm surge, the potential for torrential rains, and widespread flooding that is still causing major concern. Florence reared its ugly head overnight. 90 mile per hour winds easily topped this gas station canopy. Storm surge soaked the town of Bellhaven, North Carolina, in 10 feet of water. In Moorhead City, Florence damaged buildings and stacked debris in the parking lot. And more than 100 people needed rescuing in New Bern. The inland coastal towns like New Bern uh, are experiencing basically the ocean rising. What we've been what we've been saying, what forecasters have been predicting, nine feet of storm surge, and I'm concerned that it's only going to get worse. Florence has knocked out power to thousands throughout the region. Our power just went out instantly. We weren't expecting it. It was way too early. We were trying to charge our things for the storm to come, and uh, it already went out. Officials say millions of people may be left without power, and it could be weeks before it's all fully restored. But it's the flood that's expected to wreak havoc over the next few days. Surviving this storm will be a test of endurance, teamwork, common sense, and patience. Florence wasted no time attacking the Carolinas yesterday. The outer bands of the slow-moving storm quickly brought a surge of water inland. The rushing water toppled a cameraman in North Topsail Beach, North Carolina, and then made quick work of the garage. More than one and a half million people were ordered to evacuate, and now many are wondering what will be left when they return. As we know, Florence is it is incredibly slow moving storm, but once it finally passes through, officials will be able to finally get a lay of the land, assess the damage, uh, and get an idea of just how bad the damage is. It is a process that they say could take weeks to fully realize. In Wilmington, North Carolina, Mola Lenghi, back to you. And you can see the conditions in his shot there. Mola, thanks for that. Our Valley Red Cross is also pr providing disaster relief this morning. 15 people with the Fresno chapter now on the East Coast to help residents in North and South Carolina and Virginia. They'll be assisting with things like logistics and sheltering evacuees. The team is expected to be there for at least two weeks. We'll be sending people gradually, kind of overlapping so that when some people come back, we're ready to send more. We'll see as the days come, it, like what type of volunteers that will be needed there. Only experienced volunteers get deployed, and the Red Cross is also assisting in Hawaii. For the very latest on Hurricane Florence, stay with us here on CBS 47. You can also visit our website, yourcentralvalley.com, and our mobile app. Now to the latest on that shooting rampage in Bakersfield. Deputies now investigating a possible motive of domestic violence in the shooting that left six people dead. CBS 47's Fabiola Ramirez is following the investigation. In a span of 16 minutes and just a half square mile radius, police say 54-year-old Javier Casares went on a killing spree that may have sparked months when he divorced his wife of 28 years. In divorce documents we obtained, Casares stated that he filed because he thought his wife was cheating on him. He asked the judge to grant a subpoena to see who she was texting. Public records show two of the Bakersfield numbers are tied to two of the male victims in this shooting. Police say the day of the shooting, Casares may have forced his ex-wife, 45-year-old Petra Maribel, to his trucking business to kill 50-year-old Manny Contreras, who was one of the supervisors. Then he turned the gun on his wife, ex-wife, killing her. Detectives say 50-year-old Antonio Valadez walked into the shooting. They say Casares chased him down and killed him. 
Ten minutes later, Casares killed 57-year-old Eliseo Casares and his 31-year-old daughter, Laura Garcia. Detectives say her four children were inside the home during the shooting. Casares and his ex-wife leave behind four children. There may be more than just domestic violence. We don't know yet. We've heard rumors of things, but we're going to wait and, and until we can substantiate those rumors. This video shows the final moments of the deadly rampage. Police asked Casares to drop the weapon several times before he shot himself in the stomach. In public records, we found Casares had ties to Fresno County. He lived in Kerman from 1996 to 2007. Joey Alex, I'll send it back to you. All right, Fabiola, thanks for that. We're going to change gears now this morning. It's some good news for you here, the 47 morning matchup. Yeah, and Anthony is live at Fresno City College this morning, kicking off their morning tailgate ahead of their big game tomorrow night. Anthony, good morning. Hey, good morning, Alex. Look who I found is Sam the Ram hanging out with us here at Ratcliffe Stadium. It's getting warmed up Saturday night's big game against Butte, of course, right here at Ratcliffe Stadium. We got a lot going on out here this morning. Our buddy Cisco is here from Sweet Heat Barbecue showing some tailgate ideas, and he's already got some bacon-wrapped jalapenos. He'll be talking about that later on the show, and we're going to talk some football as well. The squad is back there warming up on the field itself. Let's talk about what's going on with your weather forecast right now. We're looking at pretty cool conditions for us valley-wide as you head out the door. Upper 50s and 60s this morning, and a jacket optional, but it is a little chilly here. In fact, can see the cheer squad over warming up next to the barbecue grill there on this morning. As we head through the afternoon, temperatures move into the mile range. We're talking mid 70s through your midday, and then we'll top out in the mid 80s later on this afternoon. Still cooler than normal for this time of year because we should be in the low 90s, of course. Stick around. Of course, we got some good air quality. It's a great day to be outside, and that air quality will likely carry us into the weekend. Well, these guys will be hitting the field. We'll talk more about that, of course, and some of your football, your 47 matchup coming up here in just a few guys. Back to you. I can't wait to see the food. Anthony, thanks for that. 607 is the time now. Plans are moving forward this morning for the first dog park in Clovis. The city is now looking at some possible locations and the size of that park. This entire plan, they say, could take about a year. It's like my granddaughter said when we talked to her last time was we're giving the dogs their own place. So that's great. But if you do have a dog and you live in Clovis, you don't have to wait that entire year. A temporary dog park will be set up at Sierra Bicentennial, and that should be done in just a couple of months. The Healing Garden at Fresno's Woodward Park has five new art pieces. Take a look. The Art of Life Cancer Foundation designed this new artwork to celebrate life and inspire hope. The new additions are made by local cancer patients and survivors under the direction of professional artists who those who participate in the process of creating the paintings say it's therapeutic. We had to trust that eventually this piece of art was going to come out of this canvas. Even the prints of the original paintings will be on display there at the Healing Garden. We have a lot more news coming up on this Friday. First, let's check back in with Anthony with what's coming up in the weather. Hey, good morning, guys. Weather-wise, it's going to be a nice, cool start to today. Sam the Ram getting some grilling lessons. More on your 47 matchup at Fresno City College coming up.